Hi everybody, how are you today? I'm Patricia and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about these crazy dreams that everyone around me seems to be having. I want to talk to you about what some of it means, what the significance is. Also, you are in a big transit. What that transit means is being moved from here to here. Think of being put on a people mover at the airport where all you have to do is step on, but it's doing a lot of the hard work for you, saving your legs, saving your joints a bit so that you can get from one place to another. That's how I view the transit or an even better one, which I really enjoyed this one time when I went to travel, uh, being on the night train where it's like, and there's like a rhythm and it's sort of relaxing and someone else has taken the wheel and that someone else is your own higher self. So let's get back to these dreams, shall we? During this time, you're going to be shutting out a lot of the stuff of the winter of your life. These dreams are dreams of the emotional body. And as dreams of the emotional body, you're going to have some weirdness. Uh, that's my technical word for it. The weirdness is, you know, where weird stuff happens and you scratch your head and you're kind of, you can't even figure out any significance to it. But I took a lot of notes and this is something that I want to talk to you about because many of these dreams are to help you see things that otherwise you wouldn't be able to see. Uh, like I say, also the weird parts of it, and some of it is, uh, in part, some of it is actually kind of random, really. It'll seem random, but hey, you have no idea who you've been, where you've been, who you've been with. You can't possibly know everything, but your soul does. Your soul knows and wants to move you and get some movement. So in some ways, this will help break the inertia. So... Um, what are you seeing during these uh, dreams of the emotional body? Well, first of all, these are not just emotional connections. They are mental, emotional connections that have to do with patterns between you and other people, patterns of behavior, patterns of reactions, patterns of overreactions. That's a real big one. Patterns of not seeing things clearly, patterns of, you know, maybe not taking personal actions that you can take or thinking it will just get swept under the rug. Now we've had some really big events which are bringing up a lot of emotion in people. Number one, you know, one bank collapse and then a following one. I've already been through this in 2000, 2006 to 2008. I, I could see the writing on the wall. Uh, we now have tech, real estate, money, financial, uh, collapses. Now, here's the thing to know about it, okay? What are you going to do emotionally? So maybe your dreams help you process some of what's happening in the collective emotionally. And again, weird, the weirdnesses, you're going to get the weirdnesses and you're going to see, you know, what is this all about? One of the other things, not just random things and random people, but urban decay situations. Now, sometimes when you're on the journey, you dream that you're under in an underground place. And in that underground place, it's very cobwebby, almost seems like a subway. People take this completely wrong. They sit there and they think, oh, well, that's just like a sub service station of sub beings. And no, it's not. It's all the unawakened people living in the urban decay because everything on this planet decays unless you start ascending and start getting your body up and running. And I'm talking about your light body. So naturally, your emotional body wants to shed things out. Urban decay dreams are not scary. They're kind of weird. Hence, again, the weirdnesses. But they are not intended to scare you. They're not intended to let you think there's some like weird underground subculture, <clears throat> subcultures. I mean, there's a lot of subcultures, but those people still live, eat, poop, buy food. You know, sometimes they buy drugs and all this other stuff, right? But that's what you're seeing in your dreams. You're seeing 
subpar existences of real people, real jobs, real mundane, banal things that we have to do here on earth. So please don't be afraid of it. Another one, um, doing things in your dream that you would not do in your waking life. Okay. Are you getting drunk? Are you smoking? Are you, um, stealing something? Are you in some kind of, uh, criminal scenario? That's another thing is criminal mentalities in many ways have belonged to many people because that's how we've had to survive 3d kill or be killed steal so you can eat you know help your family whatever but are you doing things that seem dishonorable or not in alignment with you as a light being okay that can happen in your dream again for what purpose maybe you need to get that out and away get you away from that collective that is still doing that stuff why so that you can have proper perspective proper discernment proper reasoning and the proper ability to get away get away from it detach from it in other words and have detached compassion um are have you been feeling a weird nostalgia of some kind of a physical relationship and you really miss being touched and maybe this is one of the things popping up in your dream is you were touched or you were hugged and yet there seems to be no significance to it why is that because the people from the collective they're not going to be able to fill your tanks and light up all your bells and whistles so another thing that uh seems to be very prominent with these this crazy dreamscape that people are having are animals seeing animals seeing wild animals seeing animals they wouldn't normally see in their neighborhood dreaming it and um it's bringing up a little bit of fear are animals encroaching into the area where you live are you in an area where there is a natural habitat for some kind of animals that actually live there okay we all have to coexist but we can't have the vermin living with us we can't have the parasites living with us so what are you really seeing? Are you seeing animals that have, you know, that may be above board existence or are things attached to you like blood suckers? What kind of animals are you seeing? And when I say animals, it could be insects, bugs, crustaceans, uh, birds, things that fly like anything that, you know, is other than a human being, mammal, reptile, you know, uh, some people get really creeped out at certain animals, but they're still just animals. Okay, you don't need to be creeped out. If you have a phobia, I help people get rid of their phobias because there's a reason why that phobia is happening. Now, the next thing in the same vein are creatures, monsters, beasts. Um, these come from a real deep primal place. And I'm not kidding you because some of you have had lives here on earth during times when the animals were huge, like mammoths. I actually have a memory of being on a mammoth hunt and it, that was what we ate, you know, not going to lie about it. Not going to feel ashamed of it. That and sticks, sticks like asparagus or celery, you know, like whatever we could find. There was no widespread agriculture. I mean, what, what, what are people thinking? People, you know, we found what plants we could and we had to utilize what was there. Now, some of that is trickling into people's dreams, those primal, primeval times. And it's not going to be easy to talk yourself out of it, really. Not really. Not really. You're going to be like, wow, that really is a, a real creature and you can't really make it out, but you're distinctly seeing it because it is in your dream time and it's coming from someplace. Now, sometimes there can be overlap with what you've seen on a film or a TV show or something like that. And yet when it's in your dream, it doesn't feel like that. So you have to go by what it feels like. Is it evoking some primal response or reaction in you? 
how would you be able to function in modern times with these prime primal reactions? Because that too is a part of your makeup. That's part of living here. This can be a dangerous place. Even if we're, you know, bringing everything up and we're bringing, you know, our connections and we're connecting up and into us through integration of your brand new relationship template, your night light body. What gives with that? Why, why are you going to feel this stuff? Ah, because you have to and you should. Fear has a place, but it, fear should not be blown out of proportion. So is it actual fear or is it an overreaction or is it sensible fear like signals and warning bells that you're being told hey back off hey pause a moment hey stop you know stop stop breathe a minute let's really assess this thing so we have two of our primetime players here to talk about their dreams oh man oh man I had the wildest dream. Oh, me too. I've been having absolutely like straight up whack ass dreams. Oh my God. I can't believe it. Yeah, me too. I was dreaming. I was in my mother's neighborhood and there was a house. They were going to remodel the house and it was all fenced off. And all of a sudden from under the house, I saw this alligator. But right after that was a, a twice as big monstrous part alligator, part something else, crawling out from under the house. And he said to the people with me, stop, stop, stay still. It's a predator. If it, if you move, it'll see you move and it'll come attack. Well, she's pretty sensible because she had the sense and the sensibility within her dream time to actually acknowledge that. Now, I don't know what would have happened, but... He's having dreams too. Oh my God, you wouldn't even believe what I've been dreaming. First of all, I was up. I could see the earth above me. I'm sorry, below me. I could see everything. And then it was like I was plummeting. But then suddenly I was on this mountain and it was a really cold, snowy mountain. And it felt like the Alps. But then I was like in these furs and... I just didn't even know, but all of a sudden I felt this urge to get back home and I went into a dead panic right then and there and I woke myself up and I was sweating and I was breathing heavy. Oh yeah, this is so crazy. Like, why were you scared of the snow? I don't even know. I don't even know. That's the crazy part. So crazy ass dreams, crazy dreams, dreams of the emotional body. Now, do you need help sleeping? Because I wrote the definitive book on sleeping, getting peaceful sleep, helping yourself properly with your mental, emotional body so that all of that extreme stuff, whew, extreme this way, extreme this way, you bring it to the middle, start balancing yourself, getting rest, getting proper sleep. There's all kinds of things that are going to come up, family situations. So let me just tell you, when it comes to the past, the past will be brought to the surface one way or another. It's going to be either in your face, arguing with you, like, why did you date this person? Why did you marry this person? It's going to pop up like whack-a-mole. There goes another one. You got to whack that. Oh, here it pops up again. Please start getting on track and stop treating your ascension and really this worldwide ascension as a crisis. There's so many people who have, and I'll say this, illicitly wished for a collapse of things. But what they don't understand is though a lot of those people aren't awakened. They're not dark. They just work in those systems. They work in it. If you had a job at the post office, how would you be? If you had a job at a bank, how would you be? If you had a job at this, that, or the other thing, stop bashing the people that are just doing their jobs. We are very understaffed okay staffing is an issue employment is an issue people getting sick is an issue and just add panic to that so the past will come up because we're not intended to repeat the past but it's going to come up for you at an individual level you're going to have things come up for you that make you feel like 
somehow you're not good enough or you're, you don't have enough confidence. Like, do you think he had enough confidence in that dream or was he ready to just bail? Okay. And that's the thing. We can't always just bail and we can't always just, we have to do, begin to do things properly, balanced, moderately, splurge at times, but not have everything be a flat out and out party. Okay. And that's happened ever since the pandemic. A lot of people are going off the deep end. They handle their stuff through, you know, not the best means. Okay. Your soul, your soul wants you to do it better, do it better. So do you have enough confidence? Okay. Are you anxious about, you know, some of your success? Like, are you so accustomed to the weirdness and the ick and the anxiety that you're afraid to be successful? You're afraid of what normal should really feel like? Have you forgotten what normal actually is? Well, these dreams are amplified to like really put these weirdnesses in front of your face so that you could be like, I want to be normal. You could click your heels together and say, oh, there's no place like home. There's no place like home, right? Okay, what about uh, things having to do with your education? Well, I will say this. Your brand new light body that I help you integrate, that I help you integrate and help you modulate and help you to understand how it works and feel all the bells and whistles and feel filled and end this loneliness ep epidemic. You have skills and you have gifts that are inherent to you. You have an inherent innate intelligence that is different than your education. Education exists here on earth. It's undergoing a lot of changes to get better. Again, please don't bash the teachers. People don't go to the university to get their masters so they can teach so that they can be the policeman in the classroom, okay? People need to start getting the real help that's available and start doing this, start doing their ascension because that is the real core issue is getting ourselves rid of roots chakra issues, ego issues, uh, willfulness issues, okay? The will chakra, right? <laughs> is your personal will being taken? No, maybe it's intended to be better than what you've experienced so far. So you have to do your ascension. When they say do, you do you, that means you do this stuff. You do the work it takes to integrate your light body and continue your ascension because it is a proactive thing. Are you recalling earlier times of having to fight for your life or being bullied? Are you feeling ill-prepared? Now, my work is presented in such a way so that you, yourself, can actually start to feel the benefits of doing it. It is an investment in yourself, absolutely. It is something that is intended to help you prevent deterioration of your tissues and grow tissues. Yes, you'll age because you will, because your human body will. But your light body needs to get up and running to support you. Your tr the transit that I mentioned you're in is here to bring you to a connection point so that you can begin to easily do this. Now, if you haven't started addressing your ascension symptoms and you go through every cycle of energy where you're like, whoa, whoa, stop that. Stop. <laughs> Start getting with the program. Do this work. My work makes it very expedient for you and it brings results and you feel. Check out the testimonials on my website because you will see this. Now, I'm also a genuine blue right, which a lot of people are not. I genuinely am. And I've formatted quite a lot of material to help you. So if you look at the links below and you check out my website, you will see um, these crazy dreams that you're having emotional dreams of the mental and emotional part of your ego. There are other really deeper dreams you're intended to have, deeply intimate dreams that go beyond just a Kundalini rush. So please 
start joining, start doing, start being who you really came here to be, start learning how to balance your dimensional connections with your earthly life as you converge and come together. This is a really big year. This is a transformative year for people. The last two years, people bumped along. There's a lot of people who are becoming embittered and disillusioned, and I'm here to help you get out of that. Thank you very much. Bye now. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.